Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to TAG, Time Alone with God. Uh, my name is uh, Reverend Sami Thiga, pastor here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel. Now, last week, Pastor Ted talked to us about faith, the importance of faith. And we all like faith, right? And today I want us to talk about faith sibling, works. If you've been a Christian long enough, you know that faith and works are sort of like the two wings of the same bird. Not that you're saved by, by, by works. Hold on. But we are saved uh, by faith for good works. Um, today I want us to focus on something that Paul was telling his protege, Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 1. Something very interesting that caught my attention. Listen to what he says, 2 Timothy chapter 1 from verse 6. He says, For this reason I remind you, to fan to flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And, and that word, fan to flame the gift of God, really caught my attention. And uh, I don't know about you, uh, whether you know what your spiritual gift is, but what Paul was telling Timothy was, don't neglect your spiritual gift. Exercise it. Put it into good use. Uh, don't allow it to stay dormant. Employ it for the master's service which is something that every Christian ought to think about. Do you have a spiritual gift? I know some of you are thinking, I don't think I have. But I want to tell you that if you are a Christian, then you have a spiritual gift. It has pleased God to give all his children gifts. If you are a true child of God, if God has adopted you into his own house and you are a member of his family, then you have a gift. God doesn't play favorites, giving gifts to some of his children and then leaving others without gifts. Make it your business to know what your gift is. And once you find it, employ it to the master's service. Um, Paul does not leave it there and he says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. And I think that was a timely word. Because I know that those of you who know what your gift is, sometimes you don't employ your gift to the master service because you're timid, because you're fearful, because you're thinking, you know, uh, how could I step forward and do this and that for God? What will people say about me? I'm not bold enough. I'm not courageous enough, eloquent enough, strong enough. And the list of excuses goes on. I remember uh, Moses when God appeared to him. And he said, Moses, I want to send you to go to Egypt. Remember what Moses said. I, I'm not such a good speaker. You know, I've never been eloquent and so on. But God reassured him and he told him, I will be with you. And this is the same thing Paul is trying to tell Timothy. The spirit that God has given us does not make us timid. So we've got nothing to fear if we are relying on God and the power that he gives us through the the Holy Spirit. We can do anything. Uh, the scripture says that not by power, not by might, but by His Spirit. So you can step forward. Oh, shake off your fears, Christian. Step forward with the gift that God has given you. Let's exercise it. Let's not neglect it. Let's not be timid. Let's not hold ourselves back. Let's serve the Lord. But that's not where Paul ends. But in verse 9, uh, something really interesting. He says that this is the clincher for me. He says this, verse 9 of 2 Timothy chapter 1. He says, He saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. He saved us and called us to a holy life. You can underline that word, called us to a holy life. I know many times as, as Christians, we focus on the outward things, you know, what we can do for God. But that's not where works ends. But the inner things also do matter. Not the public things, but also the private things. Holy living is such an important part of your Christian life. And uh, uh, the reason why I thought this is such an important thing to bring out is because recently... Uh, people have been talking about this great Christian teacher who uh, it was discovered that was living a contradictory life. 
he did not quite walk the talk. Uh, he seemed to do great things with his public life, but his private life was in shambles. And people have been talking about this and, and, and so on. And uh, his ministry, which he worked so hard and for so many years to build, has been brought to sort of shame. The name of Christ, which he had committed his life to build and defend, has sort of been brought to disrepute. And, and which is a reminder for us as believers that even as we go about our works, that we can serve the Lord with our gifts that we are finding to flame. We can serve the Lord courageously, but then end up doing disservice for the name of Christ. Let us adopt holy living as part of our Christian service. I'm not saying that you should now not, uh, you don't need to make time to discover what your gifts are and, 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 and enlist yourself in service because all you need to do is just live right. No, let us serve the Lord, but let us also live right. Let us not do the one and neglect the other. Let's do all, even as we obey God who said that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do the good works for which he prepared us in advance to do. These ones involve serving him, but also living right. For Tag, this is Sam. I'm out. Thank you.